Now let's take a look at what really happened when I was doing that scene with my cup of coffee steaming in the morning sunshine. Thought you guys would get a kick out of that. Okay, everyone, before I leave the uh, the hurricane shelter area, I want to take you guys back several episodes when I was in the Smoky Mountains and I went over uh, the discussion of how to hang a food bag from bear cables. So this morning, it's ever since we've entered Virginia, Virginia has done things really well here with these awesome bear boxes, which are basically slightly modified toolboxes uh, the contractors use. So in the evening, you see here it says, overnight food storage only and this region here has been known for problems with bears so what you basically do is you take your bag of food and you store it inside this box now one thing i want to give you a little tip on is some of these boxes have actually been sitting out in the forest for quite a few years and what will happen is a little bit of water will get inside and down in the corners there are sometimes rust holes so if you're going to store your bag or your food bag in there always look for holes and it's not a really big deal if that happens you don't want mice to get in here they're known uh, if there's holes in the side or even a drain hole if that's missing on one of these boxes all you simply have to do is take and uh, grab a bunch of sticks sticks from somewhere and just cram those holes shut nice and tight so it would take uh, you know all evening for the mice to chew through that um, so that will keep your food protected for the evening so there you go quick tour of a, uh, a metal food box and you'll see these in various places along the AT. So I headed out of camp this morning. A welcome sight is in the sky. It's the sun. And we'll take it. It's not supposed to last all day, but I'm going to be optimistic today. Hopefully uh, we can move fast and the trail will be good to us. Believe it or not, we have our sights set on a 19-mile day. Don't know if that's going to happen, um, but I'm certainly going to try uh, to keep moving. So last night... Great night of rest. I'm glad we only did 10 point whatever miles yesterday. Uh, got plenty of rest, all rested up. My feet feel great. So maybe I will have a shot at it. And overnight, an unwelcome guest, a mouse, chewed not one, but two holes in my down bag. So first thing this morning, I had to repair those holes with tenacious tape. So uh, maybe I'll start carrying a mouse trap with me. Be absolutely no problem with water sources today. I've only filmed a few of the, the streams that are running down the mountain. Probably walked past maybe eight to ten already. And sadly, I missed a bear sighting this morning. I was the last one out of camp. And I was trying to use gravity in my favor coming down off the mountain. I was catching up to Silky and Fixin. And when I came up on them, I couldn't help but notice they were actually singing a song and banging their trekking poles together. So I thought they had some kind of special marching band drumline action going on. So I come up behind them and I start banging my trekking poles and singing along. And Fixin about jumped out of her 
backpack and here they had just seen a bear. Um, they were only about 100 yards in front of me, so I actually missed it, but that's the reason they were singing and clacking their trekking poles together to scare the bear away. And here I almost scared fixing off the side of the mountain. This is something I don't like to see here. AT northbound reroute due to unsafe bridge. Follow Blue Blaze Dickey Gap Trail 0.4 miles to road. From there, turn right. Yellow blazing people, I'm not into it. On the road for 0.3 miles. Turn right again and stay on the gravel road for 1.5 miles following signpost to junction of Route 650 and 16 to pick up AT to continue north. Well, time to play it safe, folks. Unsafe bridge with all the rain we've had, I'm not going to chance it. So, so I can remember these directions. I'm going to take a picture of the sign quick with my cell phone and, and just take the reroute. And here we go. Every year, there's typically some type of... Uh, a reroute of the trail um, any you know thing from you know flooding washout washouts or uh, just you know like that sign says unsafe bridge even there's been forest fires so this is our our reroute through a stream we did get a lot of rain last night especially uh, late in the evening but I personally have no regret about, well, I do have a regret about getting my feet wet there. I'm trying so desperately to get my feet dried off after days of raining, slickery trails. But uh, I'm glad we only did the 10 yesterday. Chance to uh, rest up. We were able to celebrate Free Fall's birthday and that was pretty cool too. So he's been having some knee problems and fortunately, I had packed an extra knee brace for my own use. So uh, I was able to lend him my extra, which must be working for him because I've been cruising along here this morning. Now I was the last one out of camp and I haven't caught him yet. So it must be working for him. Okay, technically not yellow blazing. There's no yellow line. Back on trail, man. Shh. Some of you thought I was gonna say something else. Trimpy shoulder, everyone. Mile 524.3. Kind of has an interesting bunk system in it. Two on the bottom, one on the top, on each side, as well as a fireplace and a bird's nest. Well, I'm taking a short break coming up the mountain here trying to catch my breath. Um, we've had so much rain here in the past couple of days. In one of my previous episodes, I discussed um, a water bar and the fact that uh, you know some of the trail clubs were out raking out the water bars, keeping them open. I explained how they uh, were intended to direct the flow of water off the trail. Here's actually a perfect example of a water bar in action. You can see water running down simply from the side of the mountain and it's coming down right across the trail and you see these stones right here stacked up and you can see how it directs that flow of water simply right off the AT and down through the woods. Now one thing I want to point out 
you'll see these in several problem places. You can see here that some of that water is still seeping through. And this is actually the AT that you're looking at. But if you look down there by the tree, you're gonna see an additional stone water bar and you can see the water itself moving off the side of the trail. So that actually prevents the erosion of the trail and getting uh, big ruts and basically you know, destroying the forest. So uh, just a little bit further explanation of how a water bar works. With that being said, a huge shout out to all the volunteers, all the trail clubs, all along 14 states of the AT. Thank you so much for your hard work and dedication to the trail, the real guardians of the AT the volunteers with those 31 trail clubs. I want my vitamin D back. Thank you. Three miles to a partnership shelter. Here, partnership shelter, mile 534.1. What's really cool about this shelter is it actually will sleep, I believe, 16. There's actually a loft in the top, and there's actually a solar shower. Um, sadly, that is closed, as well as the privy over there is locked as well. So we were thinking real hard about spending the night there, and sadly, there is no tenting permitted within a quarter mile of the shelter. Um, this is a pretty popular area up here. So we have decided we have four bodies and there's shuttle information up here at the park office. And Marion is close by. And the rest of the crew, they have to do a resupply. I'll be doing that with the Rev here in the next day or two. So we've decided we're gonna go ahead, head into town take care of their resupply, and we're actually gonna split a hotel room. And some hot showers, and perhaps even some good food tonight, whatever's available to us. So, I'll probably check in one more time yet this evening. And our day is, I think it was a 19.4, if I'm not mistaken, right around 19 miles. So, good day. We got it done within a reasonable amount of time. The trail was really slick and greasy. It's great to get some sunshine, some vitamin D. So, we are headed over to the office. Okay everyone, wrapping up the day here at the Travel Inn in Marion, Virginia. Um, this is not a Nero day or a zero day. We got, I uh, tallied it up, we had 19 miles total for the day. And I must admit, I feel pretty good. We had some vitamin D in the air today, and uh, that definitely was a positive boost. But the trail was quite greasy and slick all day long. And then with all the rain that we've had, plus a thunderstorm that moved through the area. So we're here in town. Um, everybody's getting resupplied except for myself. I'll be resupplying with the Rev probably tomorrow afternoon. And we went down the street to have some awesome Mexican food. And I'm going to put what I had for dinner up on the screen. I actually ordered dinner for two, but it was actually for me. And Silky actually ordered the same thing. So it was actually pretty awesome. The food was great. But the highlight of the evening was when I informed the staff there that uh, it had been Free Fall's birthday. So they came out, they brought him dessert. They started feeding him uh, his dessert. Then they took his hat off and put a big pile of whipped cream on his head and smashed it all over his face and everything. It was pretty crazy. And it was absolutely unexpected and I feel terrible because I didn't get it on video. However, I'm gonna put a really cool picture up on the screen of the aftermath. So uh, we're gonna be back to the trailhead tomorrow at 9 a.m. We're grabbing a shuttle first thing in the morning and we're gonna keep putting those miles on the board. Thanks for watching Wild on the Trail, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow. Take care, everybody. Good night.